Hello, Michael P, Chief Executive of Pharmacy Council. Not that I'm speaking for Pharmacy Council at this point in time, but um, um, thank you, Caroline. I think it's a really useful presentation. Uh, I think it's really great to hear the vision for pharmacy services. If I can hear the question that I heard from our nursing colleagues, I can hear that we obviously need an integrated vision as well to help in the understanding of the journey that we're going on. So that integrated vision, I think, would be really valuable. I think I can also hear, when I hear John talking about some of the complexities, you, and as you have rightly highlighted, we need the how, what is the how, and I'm not quite sure we've heard a lot of the how yet. So I hear you quite rightly sort of saying at the moment, you've put in, you're suggesting something that begins the journey of the how. You've opened that door. That obviously at this point in a contract negotiation requires a great deal of trust. And so for all of us, recognising this is a very complex picture, um, there's a great deal of faith that we therefore need to be now engaging in the how. And some understanding a bit more of the how, I think would be really valuable. You know, are we talking about one year, two year, three years? What sort of changes within each of those years are we expecting? What constraints and barriers are we looking to uh, address and ameliorate? Uh, and funding is just, although a critical component, is only one component of that whole how picture. So I think the direction is, is fabulous, but there is an element in here where we need to uh, understand a bit more of that how picture along with the vision. So thank you, Robin. Would you be willing to step to negotiate with the pharmaceutical society of New Zealand to uh, enable that how discussion to go forward, being that the CSM would actually represent all pharmacies in the country and have a vested interest in and a mandate to in fact to try to promote the profession moving forward? That's one of the reasons we've brought in the consultation is so that we can have more voices in the room. Um, <coughs> I think in, in answer to those questions, very, very interesting questions, um, because the way that we've set this up is that we're very clear about, uh, about where we want to go. We are, not, we are not going to be crystal clear about how we're going to get there. And the reason we're not going to be crystal clear about how we're going to get there is because we fundamentally believe that the how will come out of how we all, how we all work together the certainty comes out of the constraints and control processes that we've built in to make sure that we don't um, disadvantage inappropriately community pharmacy in the process. But this is about the broader health system and it's about broader pharmacists <laughs> and it is absolutely our intention to have the pharmaceutical society, pharmacy council, everyone involved in this process. So I think we need to separate the contract, which is a platform, it's a mechanism, from the broader conversation that we're trying to start, which is how do we how do we move the system forward? How do we integrate health services? How do we create a model that responds to the needs of our population? It will look different and it will move at different paces in different parts of the country. Because in different parts of the country there are different needs. I mean, what I'll do on the West Coast <laughs> will not look anything like what I do <laughs> in, in Christchurch because the West Coast, um, without pharmacy on the West Coast, the whole health service would have fallen over by now because pharmacy is the secure, stable part of um, West Coast health service delivery. So that's what we're trying to create is that flexibility, but we're also trying to make sure that you're all part of the conversation. Well, it's pinning your hat on the fact that all community pharmacists are equal. When 70% of New Zealand pharmacies dispense 30% of the prescription, 30% of the pharmacies dispense 70%. So there's a, a um, way in there that's out of kilter with uh, a contract type one size runs the thing sort of So I, I, would, I would disagree with you, John. I think we are not pinning our hat on the fact that all pharmacies are the same. I think the purpose of this contract is to recognise that they're not and give us the flexibility to organise services around what the pharmacies are capable of, but also what the populations need. So if we come back to what drives DHBs and why we're needing to have a contract that's more agile and more flexible, is to enable us to, to make the services fit for purpose for delivering to the populations we need to look after. 
So no, this is not a one, this is the whole point of this is to move away from the one size fits all, but actually have that nationally consistent backbone. Locally. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> so this particular contract is the community pharmacy contract. So you're right, this is this particular contract is designed for community pharmacy. That doesn't mean that district health boards won't have other contracts with pharmacy. As is the case at the moment, PHO agreements include the sorts of clinical services that you, you yourself have provided in the past. So as part of the overall pharmacy action plan, that's part of the um, BHC's conversation. But because this is the community pharmacy agreement and it will be provided to community pharmacy, the particular agreement. But the opportunity that lies in this agreement is to move to that integration model such as we have in the alliance that we have where you've got both the Care Plus funding and the long-term conditions funding and we can collectively figure out how best to use it. And as part of how that's done in, in Canterbury, for example, is that there are some pharmacists who are hired by the collective to do the kind of work that you would do, John. Any other questions? This is a really complex process because what we're trying to do is create certainty in a platform that gives pharmacy and pharmacists time to think about how the models need to move. I'm, I'm just still a little bit confused. I might be getting sick in my old age, but you propound the concept that there is no more funding for pharmacy. And we get told that time and time again. And yet now you're saying you've got you've spent four hundred and something million dollars on community pharmacy contracts and telling me that I, DHBs will provide more money for other pharmacist services that are not associated with the community pharmacy. Have I got something wrong in there or mixed up? I'm not too sure where we, I think, Cathy, can you go back and just rerun again what DHBs do? <laughs> so DHBs, so, so first of all in the community pharmacy agreement, what we're saying is if you extend the existing contract, you're extending the existing terms and conditions. So there's no new money going in there. If you sign the new agreement, there's a whole lot of opportunity for a new set of development in the future, and DHBs, as recently as yesterday again, have all committed to putting some new money into that um, opportunity. So there is a pathway for new investment in the, in the integrated pharmacy agreement in the new contract. Um, but through but outside pharmacy. the community pharmacy agreement, again, there's the, the vision in the, uh, in the pharmacy action plan is broader than community, just community pharmacy. And it may be that contracts for age residential care, for instance, go through the community pharmacy agreement. In some communities, that may well be exactly how it needs to happen. In other communities, that there are parts of New Zealand, for instance, where there is no community pharmacy. So those contracts may go into communities um, via nursing organisations or via PHOs or via aged residential care itself. So district health boards have a role of spending the population-based funding that we have. And we have uh, hundreds, thousands, even in a district health board the size of Nelson, we have many, many, many contracts. And there is the opportunity to, to directly contract with pharmacists or organisations who employ pharmacists that don't exist even at the moment. Um, this agreement is for community pharmacists. Um, but the vision that is explained in earlier in this um, presentation uh, is about an integrated whole health system. And that may see pharmacists in various guises um, come forward because quite apart from anything else, the workforce that, that Carolyn described earlier is young, it's expanding. There's a whole opportunity <coughs> to use clinical services expertise in pharma that pharmacists have in a whole lot of other settings Sorry, I, I really just have to take you up on that. I, I mean, I, 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 I understand what you're saying about an ageing workforce and, and, and it, as opposed to a young workforce, but, you know, the scope of practice, the scope of practice for, you know, um, assistants and nurses, et cetera, and, and, and other scopes of practice, um, you know, they're, they're, they are certainly overlapping, but they're not interchangeable, and I wouldn't like to think that... Um, <coughs> 
No, I don't think. <laughs> no, we don't. No. That, uh, that they're young, you know, like I think we should be doing something to, um, we don't to utilise all those tools and to, um, you know... We don't see them as interchangeable, but we do know and we have, we have absolute... Um, we have models where, for example, the pharmacist works in the general practice team. It takes, it takes quite a load off the general practice team. It improves the medicines reconciliation processes. It does a whole lot of things that the general practice team then gets freed up to do what they need to do. So it's about making sure if we can join these things up that the nurses can use their skill set, the doctors can use their still skill set and the pharmacists can use theirs. Um, and it's a far more efficient way of making it making the system work. Certainly utilising skilled practitioners and skill sets. Yeah. Mm. I think John the problem <coughs> that we're having in, in communication here is the difference between defining the amount of money going into pharmacy services at a national level and what DHBs choose to do at a local level. And <coughs> the problem and the thing that is holding pharmacy back in a way that PHOs, for example, haven't been held back, is this national level dis discussion about, because you ask a whole bunch of DHBs and all they see is the national level is taking their money and committing it without them having any say about it. So if we can get that conversation going locally, we open the door to a whole lot of opportunities and different investment. Mm. 